Welcome to my video, Workplace Investigations 101 Checklist. I'm Dr. Robin Kelly, and I'm the president of Kelly Consulting Firm. If you like this video, please be sure to hit the like button. And if you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell. Before you get started with any workplace investigation, Remember, you must remain impartial and neutral for all actions taken throughout the investigation. Okay, so you receive a complaint. What now? Well, one of the first things you should do is indicate the date the complaint was received. The complaint should be in writing or online. We do this to make sure that we are documenting accurately the actual date that we receive a complaint. Verify that the actions in the complaint are within the policy time frame. So for example, if your policy states that a complaint must be received within 45 days of the last incident, you need to make sure that the complaint falls within that time frame. Decide whether to investigate. Not all issues will fall under your discrimination and harassment or sexual harassment policy or any other EEO or Title VII policy. The complaint may be properly situated in another office or fall under another company policy. Decide whether to assign a complaint to an internal investigator or someone within your organization or that it should be an external investigation. After you've determined that the complaint falls within your policy time frame and that the conduct falls within your company policy, here are some early first steps you should take for workplace investigations. First, take immediate or interim actions if necessary. This typically would come into play when there is a respondent or accused that poses a danger to persons or property and need to be removed from the workplace pending the investigation. Make sure you add the complaint to the database and create a complaint file. Request further information from the complainant if necessary. Give the complainant a deadline to respond to your request either within two weeks or 30 days. The next step according to the workplace investigations checklist is that you need to create an investigation plan or IP. The IP requires you to review applicable policies, work rules, handbooks, and provisions. Place current versions in the investigative file. List the parties to the complaint and list all witnesses. Determine the basis for the complaint. For example, the complaint includes an uh, allegation of harassment based on race. Identify evidence that is required. So if the complaint includes an email exchange or text messages, um, any pictures, performance evaluation, work rules, time records, etc. Schedule the parties. Indicate for each of the parties of the complaint that you have scheduled a meeting with each of them and note that in your investigative plan. Prepare your questions for each party. You need to leave yourself um, some room for some additional questions throughout the interview, but make sure that you have a template of prepared questions for each interview. During your investigative interviews, you should be taking copious notes. Take extensive notes in all investigative interviews. If your process does not allow for tape recordings during an interview, take your time for accuracy. Ask the interviewee to repeat responses if necessary and for clarification. Repeat what you have written down to the interviewee to make sure you capture what the interviewee was expressing. If you ask a question that is not on your prepared question list, add that question to your prepared question list to note that you had asked that question. Don't write your interpretation of what was stated. Try to be as accurate as possible and especially note any type of behavior or movements or hesitation to answer a question, any inaccuracies in the statements that are provided to you. Because later on, when you evaluate the evidence, you will need to make credibility determinations.
The first person you should be interviewing, uh, typically in most cases, unless there are some unique circumstances, is the complainant. Prepare questions for the complainant beforehand. Ask who, what, where, when questions. Follow up and clarify when needed. Ask for witnesses. And then this is the point where you would collect any additional evidence out of that interview. Next, you should interview the witnesses to a complaint. I suggest that either when you're scheduling the meeting with the witnesses or at the beginning of the interview meeting that you express to the witnesses that they are not a subject or respondent of the complaint and that they are merely a witness that they may have seen or heard something that is relevant to the complaint investigation. Ask the witnesses, did you see or hear anything regarding the incident? If so, what? Did the complainant or the respondent speak to you about the incident? If so, what did he, she, they tell you? After speaking with the witnesses, it's time to interview the respondent. Describe the allegations against the respondent. Ask them, what is your response to these allegations? Ask them, did the incident happen? And also ask them, who, what, when, where, why questions. Ask them, did the incident happen as alleged? If not, what did occur? This is where you would ask the respondent if he has any witnesses to his version of events. The respondent may name witnesses that may be similar to witnesses you've already spoken to that were provided to you by the complainant. Do not confirm or deny whether or not you have spoken, already spoken to any witnesses. Your job is to collect information, collect evidence, and if necessary, re-interview witnesses if there is additional information that came out during the respondent interview. Ask the respondent if the incident did not happen as alleged, if they have any reason to believe that the complainant would not be truthful. Also, in the interview by asking for any evidence and follow up if necessary. After interviewing all witnesses and collecting all evidence, one of the most important things you'll do during a workplace investigation is to evaluate the evidence and analyze all statements. This includes comparing uh, different statements, different events, taking a look at policies and procedures and how it applies to the statements that were given to you. You also will take a look at and try to determine credibility. While you were taking copious notes, you should have been noting credibility during that stage. And what I mean by that is if someone was fidgety or hesitant to answer a question or had to go back and correct themselves or said, made inconsistent statements. After analyzing the evidence, it's time to write an investigative summary report. The investigative summary report should include the parties to a complaint, any witnesses, a summary of the allegations, any evidence that you collected and by whom, also any applicable policy provisions, a collection of the statements or a reference to those statements to the allegations, then your analysis based on how you evaluated the evidence, and then a conclusion. Depending on your policy, it's important to meet with the supervisor of the respondent after completing the investigative report to share your report and findings. The supervisor of the respondent can be integral in carrying out your recommendations to resolve the complaint. Your next step should be to notify the complainant and the respondent of the results of the complaint separately. Individual investigators and organizations or companies have different processes for notifying a complainant and respondent. Some do this strictly through letter, some do this through meetings or a combination of the two. My recommendation of a best practice is to notify the complainant and respondent of the results of the complaint in separate meetings and then follow up with a letter.
After concluding your investigation and complaint process and resolution, it's important to follow up with the complainant. I recommend that you do this between three and six months after the investigation and complaint resolution to determine the work environment for the complainant, any lingering issues, or if there is some conduct occurring that could constitute retaliation. If you find that there may be some retaliation happening, follow up with the respondent supervisor so the issues can be resolved. The last step in the workplace investigations checklist is to close the investigative file and update the complaint database. The database should include information about the complaint or investigation findings and a resolution to the complaint. However, you should not close any investigative file until you have spoken with the complainant in that three to six month time frame. There may be some additional steps that were taken or additional updates that need to be included. Store all investigative files in a secure and confidential location. I recommend that investigative files and complaint information be kept in a central location. And the only individuals that should have access to investigative files or complaint database is those individuals charged in your organization with handling complaints, workplace complaints, and also investigating workplace complaints. Place a copy of the workplace investigations checklist in the investigative file and or database. The reason for that is that you may, as an organization, need to have detailed information on how you handled a particular case, if there's a lawsuit file or a filing with an external federal state agency. Thank you so much for watching the Workplace Investigations 101 video. If you would like a free copy of the Workplace Investigations Checklist, please drop me an email and mention this video at info at kellyconsultingfirm.com. Also, you can check our website at www.kellyconsultingfirm.com for more information, resources, and online training programs. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Share this video with your contacts if you like.